Hello friends, good morning, afternoon and evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to this product school webinar on outcome oriented roadmaps. I am Dibya Paul, Senior Product Manager at Amazon. A little bit of intro about myself. Um, I have been in product management for almost eight years now. I started my career as a uh, software engineer, then moved into business analysis and accidentally became a product manager. Uh, that's probably a story for some other time. Um, but over the years, uh, I have made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've learned a lot from them. I've learned a lot from my peers. I've learned a lot from reading books. And today I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you. And hopefully this will help you in your day-to-day uh, -day life as a product manager. So um, roadmaps, it's a very interesting topic uh, that comes up almost every day um, for a product manager. Now, they are very controversial and product managers carry a, a love-hate relationship with them. And that's why I love it. Now, it's pretty much uh, like a Groundhog Day every year when it comes to you know building roadmaps, be it like uh, quarterly roadmaps or yearly roadmaps. Now, uh, people keep asking, how does your roadmap look like? What tool do you use? Um, are you doing it in, in an Excel or PowerPoint or like a Kanban board? Like we keep repeating the same processes and same mistakes again and again and again. And honestly, the, the challenges that we hear about roadmap is not only the actual content of the roadmap, but you know how the roadmap is created and then communicated to others. So, so today we are trying to um, and going to decouple some of those troubles and talk about outcome um, oriented roadmaps. Um, so today we'll focus on what are the challenges with the current roadmaps? Uh, what's the roadmap? Uh, why do we need outcome oriented roadmaps? And what are the inputs required to build a roadmap? Um, so takeaways that I would like you to have is a better understanding of the alignment between product roadmap, product vision, and strategy. Why focus should be on outcomes? Why roadmaps differ uh, based on the audience? And how to apply best practices while creating and sharing a roadmap? So this is not an exhaustive list, but the major challenges that I have seen so far with roadmaps. So if you talk to uh, like 10 people within your org and you know ask them what is their perspective on roadmap, you will mostly get a different answer. They all have a different understanding of roadmaps, which is a problem. Most of the times, product managers complain about what tool they are using or the lack of it. And this uh, takes their focus away from the outcomes they want to achieve through the roadmap. Then, then you'll hear about, I have a great idea of a new feature for our product that will drastically increase uh, the adoption. Now pursuing every idea that seems good without validating or even prioritizing them is what we call the shiny object syndrome. And that's a big problem that we as product managers face when we go to meetings with our stakeholders and execs. Just like the road mapping tools, uh, product managers also blame the process. Now, when something goes wrong with the roadmap, the response is that we did everything as per the process. But remember, product managers own the process, not the other way around. Now, roadmaps uh, become a very easy way to blame other teams also who are not following it. So quite often we would hear this item on the roadmap is red because there is a dependency with that team and they are not working on it. They have prioritized something else. And finally, um, data over opinion, uh, that should be the norm, right? But uh, then you have a leader asking for a feature because he has seen something similar in the competitor's product or somewhere else. And that's it. That feature makes its way into the roadmap. So, the best product managers I have seen, um, they develop their own processes, frameworks, and methods. So you don't have to do the same thing as others are doing. Learn from the best approaches and you know adapt it to your situation and into something that works for you and your team. Now, this is uh, quite a popular, uh, quite a common image um, that we know of. The build, measure, learn, feedback loop. Uh, it's a core component of the lean startup methodology. And now pretty much all product orgs and teams apply this or some version of this in their product development process. Yet products fail, 
teams fail to achieve their goals and we do a lot of retrospectives brainstorming sessions and everything possible under the sun um but nothing comes out of it so what's happening here so we actually follow a different process uh, to be honest like we build something we get feedback from customers uh, or stakeholders put them in our roadmap um without validating them we start building it again hoping that this time things will change unfortunately the results um, are always the same um product managers might think that you know they are customer obsessed but this is a wrong example of that you need to know when to stop listening to your customers and this is what melissa perry calls as a build trap uh, we need to get out of it and the bigger problem here is talking in outputs so outputs are the what they are the tasks the to do lists the features stories launch dates you name it on the other hand outcomes are the problems to be solved the value created and the why behind it behind it all now the problem is teams often get lost in planning for the what which is the output and lose sight of the why which is the outcome and uh, features are actually outputs uh, the goal of any feature you ship to a customer should be uh, to change the customer's behavior in a in a positive way in a in a measurable way now if you ship a feature and it doesn't have the desired desired outcome then we would say we haven't done the job right um, to shift the perspective we need to build our uh, road maps around problems we are solving around capabilities we want to unlock um, and the user behavior we hope to change now uh, before going into what a road map is let's just reconsider what we discussed what a road map isn't so it's not a list of to do features which are outputs it's not a list of dates and deadlines uh roadmaps are a dynamic in nature they change over time based on customer feedback and company strategy and road roadmaps aren't release plans um, and neither a tool to blame other teams so remember there are no perfect roadmaps uh, like in search of the perfect roadmap we lose sight of the big picture um so what is a roadmap a product roadmap specifically a product roadmap is just one of the tools that you know helps a product manager to communicate their intent so when you combine this with uh, other elements such as the product vision the product strategy it provides a holistic view uh, or a full picture of uh, how a product team will capture and execute on the market opportunities now it helps drive a, a shared understanding of the strategic direction for a product um what is the purpose of a product roadmap direction alignment priority predictability and order so direction in the absence of a product roadmap many teams and execs feel lost so a product roadmap provides direction to your team it tells you why you are on a certain path and also tells you if you are on the right path or not so it's just like the gps on your phone alignment a product roadmap is a simple communication tool that helps you know align all the key stakeholders uh, creates a, a cross cutting um, a cross functional unity and ensure the teams are not fighting amongst each other uh, rather they are working together effectively uh, towards one single goal uh, towards one single vision and roadmaps are all about alignment uh, priority Uh, a product roadmap uh, surfaces the priorities a team or business unit will be focusing on in order to achieve their goals or their OKRs. So without roadmaps, we would only have opinions. Uh, predictability: uh, a product roadmap uh, provides predictability to the product development process, so which allows teams to allocate resources and then coordinate the product development activities among themselves. Uh, order uh, now we spoke about direction we spoke about alignment but who is going to do the work so we work with a lot of people so to get things done we need uh, some kind of order now with order you are better able to organize the work and you know ensure that your roadmap is not just something on paper and somebody is actively working on it um to to create um to create the outcomes that they want to achieve 
Now, this is what my first product roadmap looked like. If you ask me today what it was, um, I can't give a good answer. Like it was a mix of uh, features, tasks, release dates, um, quite waterfallish in nature. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, product roadmap takes you know many forms in Word, Excel spreadsheet, Kanban board, or a slide deck. Now many companies really only have a, a release plan. Um, leaders, leadership teams like this kind of you know certainty and control. Uh, even though teams rarely deliver on the roadmap as planned, and the features delivered rarely have the needed impact of the outcome. Now this list of features and dates gets labeled as a roadmap, but it actually isn't. So we just uh, shift features blindly at some date and hope that uh, they'll have the same impact uh, that we want. Uh, so this is an example of another uh, feature-based roadmap. You will see uh, timelines and then just uh, a mention of all the features that the team wants to do. So when we think of you know building a software product, we don't know, uh, don't always know what our customers want. And we have no idea what the finished product would look like. Um, so obviously, it is impossible to estimate the time and effort it would take to build uh, the product without doing enough discovery, without validating our hypothesis, without understanding the customer pain points, the jobs to be done. Uh, but the problem was that in these kind of roadmaps, we never shared the context. Why are we doing certain things? Why not? What value are we looking to deliver and why? What user problems are we trying to solve uh, for whom and why? So that's the question that keeps coming up. The answer to this is outcome-oriented roadmap. So what does the outcome-oriented roadmap look like? What is it? So outcome-oriented roadmaps uh, actually focus on value rather than features or dates. Um, these roadmaps have like four important components, uh, vision, product strategy, goals or the OKRs and themes. Now, in this roadmap, it's important to ensure that we have a clear lineage and alignment between you know, the vision, strategy, um, OKRs and themes. Now, this roadmap focuses on changing the customer's behavior um, in a more positive way and in a measurable way, uh, such that it aligns with vision instead of focusing on tactics. Uh, so to start, uh, start with the vision, um, start with a simple and compelling product vision. Now, it should explain why your product exists. Where do you want to be in the next five years? The vision actually acts like a North Star to your product and engineering teams uh, so that you, know, to, you ensure that they are all rowing in the same direction. Now, everything in the product roadmap should align back to the product vision. Take an example. Amazon's uh, vision is to be us most customer-centric company where customers can find and discover anything they might want to buy online. Uh, see, it's timeless and it shows um, customer focus, customer obsession. Uh, next is the product strategy. Now, product strategy is like a plan or a, or a framework you know, created by the company to realize the, the vision mentioned earlier. So the difference between vision and strategy is that the vision focuses on where you want your product to be, while well, strategy will explain how you will get there. And then comes the most important part, like defining your outcomes through goals and metrics. I believe the best way to do that is through OKRs. That's where you'll, you'll see a uh, mention of OKRs every time uh, in all the slides. Um, instead of So replace outcomes with the OKRs here. Uh, now objectives um, in OKRs are like are descriptions of what you want to achieve. It should be short and ins inspirational. Key results uh, will be like the set of metrics that you know measure your progress towards the objective. Now, uh, this is a very collaborative process where leadership teams work with product managers to translate the organizational vision and strategy into the product vision and strategy. Um, and then if you come down, you have the themes and opportunities that you would lead to the desired outcomes or, he or help achieve your uh, OKRs. Now, themes here are the jobs to be done identified through the discovery process. Now, each theme is a collection of ideas, hypotheses. Uh, these are your hypotheses that will help tackle the customer pain points. Now, this is pos uh, possible only if you 
have a deep understanding of the customer, the market, uh, and existing data in order to create products that are uh, you know feasible, desirable, viable, and usable. Now remember, this is again uh, part of the discovery process. I want to emphasize on that point because without doing product discovery, you cannot uh, achieve your outcomes or you cannot build features uh, those are aligned with your outcomes, aligned with your strategy and vision. Uh, by this time, you would have noticed that um, we don't have like features, stories, or solutions in the outcome roadmap. Um, so that would be a release plan. A release plan is like a list of uh, features and needs. A roadmap, on the other hand, as we have discussed earlier, like it's a document intended to communicate the strategic direction of the company. So what are our goals? What are our outcomes? And how will we win in the market? Uh, it's easy to come up with uh, you know, solutions or features, but how do you ensure that it would solve the customer's problem or help uh, you achieve your outcome? Now, the cross-functional team's responsibility here is to you know, collaborate and brainstorm on ideas as well as validate them doing, during the discovery process. Now, the cross-functional team comprises of the product team, the engineering team, the UX design team, um, and maybe the operations team. Now, uh, this will remove the silos. This is uh, the part of what we call, um, you know, the discovery process in the product development lifecycle. Uh, now, validate which ideas or hypothesis solves the customer's pain points using data and customer feedback. Now, then create features based on validated solutions to customers' problems. Um, the roadmap expectations, you know, vary from uh, stakeholder to stakeholder. So using different roadmaps tailored to different audiences uh, matters a lot. And I believe uh, it's very practical and important nowadays. For example, a leadership team would be best suited to a roadmap which shows the product goals and plans at a most high level, strategic level, while individual product teams or scrum teams may want, may want to see more you know, granular information, such as what features they would be working on or stories which they would be working on. Now, we are going to talk about like portfolio roadmap or sort of like the leadership roadmap that you would show to a leadership team. And uh, this is an example, um, and I'll go through it, uh, like how um, it has been built, uh, how, what are the ideas that go into building this outcome-based roadmap as an example. So, uh, first of all, it's, uh, honestly, it is difficult to put time frames on roadmaps, but to be pragmatic, one needs to provide some guidance to leaders or execs on timelines. Now, giving them a feeling of certainty and predictability. So, time horizons in terms of like now, next, and later, uh, that works really works well. Um, always list list your vision, strategy, and goals or OKRs um, on the roadmap to ensure that your outcomes tie back to the strategy and vision. Uh, you group your outcomes into themes and then break them down into ideas if that makes sense. And this helps make your uh, you know, strategy more concrete. Um, now, so let's take an example of an e-commerce marketplace. Now, their vision is to build a marketplace where people can come to buy and sell anything they want. Now, so they believe that their key strategies are you know, being mobile first, um, complete self-service, and a more personalized experience for the users. Uh, this is how they plan to achieve their vision. Now, their feedback and past data showed that uh, they are facing challenges with uh, their product adoption, their mobile purchases, and many more challenges. But they want to focus uh, on the above two outcomes, which is how can they uh, improve their adoption to 40% and how can they increase their mobile purchases by uh, 15%. That's the outcome they want to achieve. So now, as you uh, as the team did more discovery and you know understood the customer pain points and the jobs to be done, they clustered the major pain points or opportunities under these themes. Now, in this case, the team found that you know their product needs to be more engaging, you know needs to improve um, on ease of use, uh, and then needs to improve on the customer support. So now the product team comes up with ideas or hypotheses that needs to be validated. So in the near term, term they decide to experiment, experiment on, for example, uh, on the quick view dashboards, um, on the how-to articles, and how they can help uh, resolve issues much faster um, through issue ticketing. 
So and a later stage, and in a later stage, they would like to look into like you know badgeification, gamification to improve engagement, um, or to focus on chat to improve support. Again, these are hypotheses that needs to be validated or experimented. Now, when you go to a product team or a scrum team, uh, engineering team, and show them the roadmap. Um, so you, as you go further down the road um, through the discovery process, you you actually share more detailed view with your cross-functional product team. Um, so you are not only talking about the why, how, but also the what. And in my experience, this kind of transparency helps you know elicit more commitment and ownership from the team. So in a product team roadmap, you go deeper into the solution that was defined at the end of the discovery process like teams go through the backlog refinement and you know do release mapping exercises to create a prioritized um, backlog of features and user stories now this gives a sense of certainty to the engineering team so um, in this uh, roadmap that you are showing, uh, seeing is not very different from the previous one but as you can see it's more detailed uh, it talks in details about uh, the solution in the form of user stories and and features Uh, another great example um, here you'll see is that of a, a Netflix roadmap uh, from 2007. And uh, you can see they uh, they clearly articulate the vision at the top, the principles uh, that they have, which is basically to delight customers in a, in a margin enhancing and hard to copy ways. Shows what outcomes they want to achieve. Uh, they have their key strategies and the tactics, like how they're going to achieve those strategies and then how they're going to measure uh, their outcomes, which is through metrics. So you can see here um, that there is a clear alignment between their vision, um, between their strategies, tactics, and their uh, metrics, and everything is measurable. Um, so basically, the point is, if you can't measure something, don't build it. Roadmap inputs. Um, I moved to a new house um, a few months back, and, uh, you know, we bought a lot of um, IKEA furnitures, and this is one of the desks that I have and the chair. And um, I built it like last month. Now imagine if I didn't have the um, the instruction manual um, on the right side, uh, which acted like the input for me. So without that input, I wouldn't have uh, achieved the outcome, which is building a, an amazing desk, uh, a chair for myself. So so inputs are very important for roadmaps now. I know I talked about um, all the important components of an outcome-oriented roadmap, but the first question that I get uh, when I speak to people is like, so where do I start? I say you work backwards from the customers. Start from the early inputs. By that, I mean talking to your customers, doing market research, talking to your stakeholders, um, and stakeholders could be your sales team, your you know customer support team, your operations team, uh, it could be other lines of business. Now, most of the times, they know how the outside world feels about your product and engages with it. Now, digging into your product data and analytics also helps, which I believe is like gold nuggets to me. Um, and then you also have your product and engineering teams who have a lot of insights and ideas if they have been on the team. Um, and they can provide a lot of um, you know input uh, to your own map. Now, once you are doing uh, done with the uh, the early inputs, uh, to be honest, by the way, they are never done. It's a, it's a process that keeps going on. You you try to collect as much information uh, as you can, and you keep uh, doing it every day. So collect all this information to have you know a solid understanding of your customer pain points. Now you can use different tools here, such as empathy mapping, um, etc. Uh, but as a team and a company. Um, you have to list out the top problems your customers are facing now. Prioritize the list of problems. After this, document the customer's jobs to be done. Uh, I'm not going to go, go into the details of jobs to be done, uh, but that's an important thing. You have to create your prioritized list of jobs to be done that you want to focus on. Now, here comes the tricky part, which is aligning your vision, your strategy, your OKRs with the jobs to be done. And when you are done uh, with that, you actually get your themes. So after hypothesis validation, um, 
which is part of your themes, which is, you know, collection of your ideas and hypothesis, you come up with your epics, your features or stories, um, and you can validate them through like A-B testing or prototype testing, and then continue to prioritize day in and day out. I cannot emphasize uh, any more on how important this prioritization is. Now, you know, there are different ways of being prioritized. You can use Canva model, you can use RICE framework, uh, you can use value versus effort framework or Moscow. There are different ways of doing it. And it depends on you, your team, which method you want to choose, um, be it qualitative or quantitative. Uh, but you have to build a feedback loop here that will, you know, continue to enrich your product roadmap and hence it's not static. Um, you will continuously um, get inputs that will help you, uh, you know, improve your roadmap. Um, and you have to go keep prioritizing it. So, you know, be it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, uh, these are the mechanisms you want to build, like uh, how often you want to, you know, update your roadmap um, based on the team's needs, the company goals. So the final step uh, here is to, you know, rally everyone around the roadmap and empower them to get the information uh, they need. Um, so product roadmaps, to be honest, are brutal. It's not just uh, something you put on paper or, you know, on a PPT. It requires a lot of uh, shuttle diplomacy uh, that lead to alignment and consensus. Now, a product manager acts as a mediator here between like various teams, stakeholders and leaders you know, to get buy-in. So just sit down with, uh, you know, each stakeholder uh, one by one and go over your roadmap. Try to understand their concerns and build a trust uh, with, with them. Now, remember, trust is a is a two-way door. So uh, if you want things to get done, sometimes you have to uh, swallow your ego. Um, if you do it alone, you might be burning bridges here. So building a roadmap, you know, tests all the, required skills of a product manager, and most importantly, your communication and listening skills. Yes, you heard it right, uh, your listening skills. So while talking to your uh, cross-functional teams and you know other stakeholders, we have to uh, listen more and you know try to absorb what they're trying to say. Now, a uh, couple of concepts uh, that I want to talk about, um, which I feel are, are very important while building a roadmap, and this is being used extensively, within Amazon and outside Amazon too. And they are customer obsession and mechanisms. Now, Amazon defines customer obsession as a leader's initiative to, you know, start with the customer and work backwards in order to earn and keep their trust. Uh, customer obsession starts with, you know, uh, with understanding the customer's mindset and what do they require from us. Now, this in turn helps us understand uh, our own products and helps build a roadmap that doubles down on, on the customer's pain points, their jobs to be done. Now, this makes you think um, of the value proposition of your product. So a roadmap should come out of your obsession for the customer and their jobs to be done. Um, mechanisms, uh, a bit different, uh, is, is a complete process that uh, transforms a set of inputs into a set of desired outputs. Now, in building a roadmap, the number and complexity of decisions uh, you know, are, are a lot. And so are the challenges of communicating and coordinating with other parts of the organization. Now, it needs a mechanism, uh, a complete process uh, that improves and reinforces itself over time. Now, think what mechanisms you want to build to develop roadmaps that comes out of your obsession for your customers. A uh, few examples are your quarterly planning, your monthly customer feedback review, or your monthly business review meetings. So build a, a mechanism that will uh, enforce your customer obsession uh, into a repeatable set of outcomes in the form of product roadmap. So before we go away, few key takeaways, uh, which we have already discussed, um, focus on outcomes, um, align your roadmap with the vision, product strategy, and your, out uh, and your OKRs. Um, ditch the dates, the timelines, because uh, once you talk about dates, it's a different kind of commitment. You go into a different rabbit hole. And then practice influence without authority. Now, influencing without authority involves understanding and you know empathizing with uh, different kind of people, different people in your teams, uh, different kind of stakeholders. And then you build trust with them. 
So uh, thank you uh, for joining this webinar and hope uh, we enjoyed this webinar and learned something um, which you can utilize in your day-to-day -day life as a product manager. If you have any questions, reach out to me uh, through email or LinkedIn um, and have a great day. Thanks.